Hello everybody, this is Burak Güzel and welcome to another episode of Code Igniter from Scratch. I believe this is episode 16 and we're going to be working with uh, data and this is going to be a mixed subject so we're going to utilize a few different things we already learned about and put it into a more practical use. Uh, we're also going to use a database, uh, a sample database I'm going to show you that contains uh, information about movies and actors etc um, so we're going to build a page that will display movies uh, will have pagination and it will also have sortable columns um, so let's get started and before we do any coding um, we are, we're going to import this database uh, this database I got from the MySQL documentation actually so if you go to um, the MySQL documentation at this URL on this page that says MySQL documentation other MySQL documentation um, there is a sample database called Sakila database so if you Google for Sakila you should be able to find this page um, and they provide a zip file to download this so uh, that, that way you can import it to your uh, database so download the zip file and the contents will look something like this you'll have a few files and these three are for the workbench uh, MySQL workbench for looking at the visual design of the database and these two files the SQL files are the important ones that you need for importing the database uh, first we're going to import the schema file which which will create the tables and then we will import the data file that will insert the data rows into the tables um, so just go to your PHP my admin and create a database called Sakila and I just deleted everything so starting from scratch again I have zero tables uh, and to import uh, the database just hit the import link here up top and um, some people will have a two megabyte uh, upload limit and I increased it in my PHP settings to 128 uh, you might have to do that too because one of these files will be actually three megabytes so it might block you from uploading but also what you can do is zip this file and upload the zip file instead because this upload actually accepts zips files also so anyway um, import the schema file first hit go and it just created 23 tables pretty quickly and import the data file now this might take a few seconds um, so you'll see that there are these 23 tables actually some of these are views not actual data tables and for example the film list table is a view and the film table is the actual table that has data film list co like combines film category and maybe other tables you'll see now the import is done uh, you can just look at how much data there is like 47,000 rows of total data so this is a nice database to do some practice with and uh, for example if you look at the film list view which actually works just like a table you can't insert to it I don't think but uh, or you shouldn't insert to it it just pulls from multiple tables like the film table um, so yeah we're going to pull this data and display it and make it sortable in a nice table um, so let's get back to coding so install code igniter I have a fresh install um, my config is simple I have my base URL and I'm auto loading database here URL form stuff we usually use um, and your database.php don't forget to set your database name to Sakila and of course your username and password also um, and I have an HD access file for getting rid of index.php so the usual stuff now we can get started by creating a uh, controller first so I'm going to create a new PHP file under the controllers folder call it films so it's going to be obviously class films extending the controller class 
and let's have a function named display that will be the, the method that displays this table so it's going to be like this I'm going to close this for now or actually just change the URL okay it's blank this is my current install that I'm working on localhost slash CI series films display and there's nothing here um, at the end it's going to load a view so once I gather all the data I want to display I pass it to a view called films and pass it in an array called data we usually use the same names um, so that means we're going to have a view called films so create a PHP file now let's create a blank document don't need JavaScript um, give it a title let's just say films it's pretty easy um, so this is going to have a table and it's going to have headers it's going to have like an ID and the films title etc I'll put more in a bit and then there will be a body part and in the body we're going to have a for each loop for uh, going through a bunch of films as film and for each so this will generate uh, multiple rows of so it will be TR tags and a bunch of TD tags so ideally I want this film variable PHP echo film to have these fields I believe in the database it's called FID so it, instead of ID and title also goes here again I'm gonna add a few more rows uh, I mean columns uh, so this is going to be the structure of the table basically and I want to have pagination so here if pagination actually I'm going to do that later let's do the table first alright so if I refresh I'm gonna get errors that's fine um, so go back to the controller now we're going to fetch <clears throat> the film data from the database um, and I know that this this is going to get complicated later on so ideally I want a model to handle my database operations uh, so I'm gonna assume I'm gonna have a model named film model so I gotta load that so the the function to get all the films I need should be part of this model and we can call it search I'm gonna call it search instead of just fetch or something because eventually I want this to be searchable and we'll get there eventually um, so it will return some results and I want to return the results into the data array but this is going to be an array uh, I'm going to return both the results and the number of results so like all the rows from the database that will be returned will be going to films variable so results rows so none of this exists yet I'm just uh, coming up with names to use num results num rows so I want to have this function in the film model and I want it to return an array and uh, it gets stored here first and inside this array I want to have two uh, members like one will be the actual rows so that will become films in the view that we can loop through and also the number of results I'm just gonna have a 
spot here that shows you um, how many results were found. So like here, it will just say found them results films. So it could be a thousand movies, but only display 20 because of pagination. Uh, so this will be that thousand, and this films will have 20 rows. So that 20, those 20 rows are here, and those thousand, the number thousand comes from here, and those were obtained by calling this search function. So let's implement that search function. Uh, go to models folder and create now this film model. So it's going to be called film model.php. Um, it's going to extend the model class. And I'm going to have that search function or method. So obviously, we need a query, uh, a database query here. But as I mentioned before, I want two different things. One is the the results, like the limited number of results that will be displayed, and the total number of results from the database. So that will make two queries. So we're going to have an actual results query and a count query, let's say, for counting the results. So the results query is should be simple a select and from I'm going to use the film list table so if you look at the database the film list table is the one I want to use it has the, an ID title um, a category price length rating I'm gonna grab those fields I'm not going to grab description or actors. Those are kind of big to be put in a table. Um, so from film list, uh, grab these fields. FID, title, category, length, rating, and price. Um, so we want to have a pagination and let's say 20 per page. To get 20, we will have a limit um, call here, but it's also going to have an offset. So if it's paginated, every page has a different offset, starting with zero. Um, so you have a limit and offset. That means um, we should pass them to this search function. So it's a flexible function um, instead of hard coding the numbers here. So that's the query. And let's put the results in a separate variable. So I'll call it ret. This array is what's going to be returned. An array index of rows will be <coughs> just get results. Now, when you have your query and you call get on it, and then that will execute the query, and the result will give you the rows of the results. Now, let's have another query for getting the count. This time we're going to select a count star and I'll have an alias called count. And now you gotta pass this second parameter false because what the database class does is it takes each of these fields and puts um, these backticks around them, like escaping them or enclosing them. Uh, that that makes it uh, in a, a name rather than a special word like the count function here. So if the if the library were to put these backticks around this, it wouldn't work. It has to stay uh, as it is, and that's why you disable that um, quotation by putting false as the second parameter here. So whenever you use a function as a field, then you should put false here. and from the same table and um, I'm not gonna do the same as this I wanna get the first row and get the count field that's all I'm interested in so I'm gonna 
get the data in a temporary variable for now. Q, Q get result. So I want the first row, which will be zero, and the count. And I'm going to assign this to is that red rows. It's going to be red num rows. And return that array called rets. So that looks okay. So we have num rows and rows in this array returning to here. So I got rows, num rows, putting into the data, passing data into the view, and view um, having the film. So um, I have all these fields. Um, let's go back to them all. I have all these fields. I want to display them all. Let me copy that here. So title, I'll have category, length, rating, price, and same deal here. Title, category, length, rating, doing some copy paste work. Okay. Let's see. There is an error. Oh, um, in the model I put limit and offset as these parameters. So we expect to send that from the controller. So there will be limit and offset. Um, for now they will be offset will be part of pagination so it will be in the URL it will be the only parameter here and limit will be a value we decide like 20 I'll put it here um, so the first page should have 20 results on top the total number of rows from this table it, apparently it has 997 rows in the film list table so that's that number and our nice structured table here let's add a little bit of CSS to this a little bit of styling nothing fancy just changing the font for example and the table to have a little border td th um, six good gray and put some padding on the cells which is always nice and there we go. Um, maybe a little bit of spacing for the divs also. Okay. So let's see what, what else we can improve here. Um, obviously, we're going to need some pagination because we're displaying only 20 and we want to have links here for the pages. Uh, I think pagination was covered, but it was one of the earlier episodes. I'm going to go over it real quick, not too detailed. Um, let's put a comment here that says pagination, and let's load the library. And at the end, we pass it in a variable called pagination and it's created by going create links 
Now we're going to pass some configuration to this. Uh, I'll put it in a config array. Config, say array. First, the base URL. It will be this page, uh, which is film slash display. And the uh, rows, number of rows. We already have that right here. Um, and then it needs to know the per page limit config per page. We also have that as limit. And where the segment is in the URI for the offset variable. So segments so this will be this variable so it will be film slash display slash the offset so it's going to be to be the third segment for now this is going to change in a little bit so normally it's three by default normally you wouldn't have to do this but I'm going to change this number later on pagination initialize initialize with this config variable, creating the pagination, passing it to the view, and in the view we should display that. And sometimes if you're returning less than 20, uh, there will be no pagination. So let's put a con conditional here. So pagination could be an empty string. If it's not an empty string, display it and say, um, put a div here, say pages, let me scroll down, pages, echo pagination, so offset here, uh, now this should work, this should make the offset work it will create links with the different offset numbers for each page and that will get passed to the search function and the model will use that in the limit function so let's refresh the pagination is being created and if you go to second page you see the number 20 shows up that's the offset uh, the page 4 will have 60 offset and that gets passed through all the way to the search function and it will start with the offset of 60 to pull 20 results from there. All right, um, next step, we want to make this sortable. So we'll have clickable links on these titles. And when you click, it's going to sort by that column. How are we going to do that? It's, it's not going to be like Ajax JavaScript trick. It's going to be actually reloading the page because there's hidden data that's not inside this page. So sorting with Ajax may not be very good here. So we're going to sort uh, the old-fashioned way. So go back to the controller. Now, when you're sorting, there are two things to consider. The sorting field and the sorting order. So those should be part of the URL probably. So it, it will be uh, in here next to offset and I want to leave offset as the last um, variable because of the way uh, the, the pagination usually works it appends it to end of this base URL so I'm going to put it in front of the offset those two variables like sort by and sort order and just as we have a default value for offset, let's put defaults on these two. So by default, it should, it should sort by the title, and the sort order should be ascending. And these will get passed to the search function. So limit offset, sort by, and sort order. Now we got to modify this. sort by sort order okay um, so we gotta make it use those and that is you uh, that is done by calling 
calling the order by function in in the query. So order by your sort by field and the sort order. We don't have to do that for the count query because that doesn't care about sorting or the order. Um, if you want to be safe, make sure to make sure a correct uh, field name is passed. Make sure you don't get like since this is going to be coming from the URL, somebody can type in anything. So you want to filter out things that don't fit. So for example, sort order has to be either ascending or descending, right? Um, if it is descending, that's fine. Otherwise, it should be ascending. So it will it will only be either one of these values, descending or ascending. Um, so this will make it default ascending too. And the sortable columns. So let's say sort columns. You have an array, and the array contains these fields. We're going to allow them to sort by all of these fields. So, so we can make an array of them and make sure that the sort by variable that is being passed here is one of these values. So it has to be in that array in array sort by if it is in array then it's fine just pass the same value if it's not we will just default to title oh by the way if you don't know this syntax it's the ternary operator it's like a conditional it's like an if else statement shortcut so this is the condition of the like, if statement. So if this is true, it will return that. Else, it will return that. So if the sort by is inside sort columns in this array we just created, it will just return back itself. So it will assign sort by to sort by. Um, otherwise, it will assign title to sort by. So that's how the ternary operator will work here. So instead of typing multiple lines of if else statements I wrote just a single line to take care of that so now this should take care of the sorting let's refresh um, all right now 60 is not going to be here I'm going to type the URL because I haven't made these links on these um, headers yet so display the next variable is sort by let's sort by length for example and sort order descending uh, the longest movie first and then the offset so let's again do 60 where here we have okay something is not right oh uh, since we moved the offset variable you gotta go to your controller and change this URI segment so it will be okay we have to change the URL to the base URL it will be film slash display sort by I should put this in double quotes sort by slash sort or now this is the base URL for our search page uh, and after this it will put the offset and that becomes the fifth URI segment so change that to okay now refresh all right now it knows that we're on the fourth page sorting by length descending order as you can see it's being sorted by this column nicely you can go back to another page yeah the last page etc so sorting is working now let's make it uh, user interactive so that they can click and sort and while I'm doing that I'm also going to clean up something here in the view as you remember we have the headers and the fields here listed and we might want to make this nicer let's assume that there's going to be an array passed here and that array will contain every single field and it will loop through that and 
output every single header here and you'll see that it will actually make things a little cleaner um, in the controller let's create that and call it fields and we're gonna have the two versions of fields one the internal name of the field so for example the internal name is FID title category for example these are lowercase and FID is different than ID the one that we're displaying so we've got to have these this version and that version and all I'm going to do is create the array and these values will be the index and these will be the values so I don't have to send two variables I just have to create an array that will look like this FID corresponds to ID title is title and so on and so forth rating price and optionally you could actually let's, let's put this up higher all this fixed stuff should be on top like limits and fields and optionally you could just pass this to the search function and in the query you could use the same array so you don't repeat them like here and here so that's that could also be another step of cleanup but I'm gonna skip that so I am creating this fields array that will get passed to the view and in the view I'm going to just loop through that so here it'll be a for each fields as field let's say field is the internal name corresponding to the field or let's say field name and field display since this is the header part it will use the display version so and for each th echo field display and something similar for here I'm gonna just copy this loop I put it within the tr tag tab and instead of th you're going to have td so the line is going to be like this except this will be the field name then we can get rid of all of this So it's less code and it will be a little more usable later on um, and no repetition. So I save the file, refresh, nothing changes obviously because we just did some code cleanup. Now next thing is to actually adding those links that I was mentioning. Um, so it's going to be done in the view so here this is not just going to be a text but it will be a link so let's use the anchor function and what's going to be the target of this link it's going to be film slash display obviously and the sort by field so sort by field here is field name and the sort order um, okay that's going to be a little tricky I'm going to close that for now um, field display will be the text okay let's see the links first when I refresh okay we got these links so if you mouse over title you'll see that it will be films display title 
it is sorting and category is also sorting length is also sorting rating so but it's not reverse sorting like if I repeatedly click length it's not going back so we need something that kind of flips flops uh, between ascending and descending so it's going to be end of at the end of this URL and that's going to be a again a ternary condition like I used before so let's separate this in a second line and I'll put dot to append and this will be the sort order so it will be either descending or ascending and I'm gonna put the condition here I gotta put parentheses around the whole thing as well whoops okay so parentheses around the whole thing and here will be the condition and this is the first option this is the second option so if there is a sort order already that is ascending the link will switch to descending otherwise it will default to ascending and maybe I should move the comma up here okay so all right to review we have our URL which is films display the field name and then we need the sort order and the existing sort order will determine what the next sort order will be. So if it's ascending, it will switch to descending. Otherwise, it will just be ascending. And field display is what goes inside the link. So let's refresh. Oh, there's an error. Because we actually did not pass sort order into the view. So let's do that. Um, here, sort actually sort by and sort order both of them need to be passed sort order so the view can see those variables okay um, so click title oh see it went to descending if you click again it's ascending order again descending um, click length ascending and click title it becomes descending this is not very um, this is not very ideal like if I click length I, I expect it to be ascending order yeah that's fine but if I click title again I want it to be ascending order I don't want it to flip flop to descending order right right away uh, so this the behavior should be anytime you click a field for the first time it should be ascending order and if you click it again okay it switches the descending order but if you switch and click to another field it should also be ascending order but it's not um, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of code to fix that so this should also have a condition the sort by equals the field name so what this does is if the current sorting is by this field name and if it is ascending order then you switch the descending order otherwise you default to ascending order so this will only happen if you're already sorting by this field and then you can switch the descending so this will just fix that issue uh, the refresh I'll just go to the default page for now to demonstrate so hit category the right order uh, hit length again the right order and hit title the correct order so it's working so if I click the same field again now it switches back to descending click length ascending click length again descending so it's working and one more thing I want to add is a little visual clue to show what field it's being sorted by so for example people usually put like a down arrow or up arrow things like that next to the field and we're going to do that with actually a, a CSS trick so for example inside this th field we can put a class based on the sort uh, so if now this is a loop going through every field so if we are on the field that is being sorted by we want to display a class 
uh, a CSS class. So if it's sort by equals this current field, I'm going to echo a class. And I'm going to call the class sort underscore the sort order. So if it's being ascending order, it will say sort ascending. It will, if it's otherwise sort descending, uh, we can just look at the source code and see that. Title, if you look at the source code, see the title header here got sort ascending CSS class. The other ones don't have that. Um, and if they have that CSS class, which is sort ascending, and the other one is descending, and we can actually add content using CSS. Um, let's put after. This is a little CSS trick. So I'm going to copy paste the character, this character. You can find it in your character map or I don't know what Mac uses, but it's part of the default characters. Okay, so we're not using any images or anything. This will do when you refresh. And there it is. So title, this means it's being sorted by title in ascending order. Let's click rating, same thing, length. Click again, now it switches. Category, click again, switches. Also, when you're sorting by column, uh, if you click further down the pages, you'll notice that it preserves that sorting order. So this is it for now, uh, for this episode. And um, in the next episode, we could possibly add a search form to this and a little more uh, functionality. Uh, I hope you learned from this and I'll see you next time. Bye.